Where are we headed?
I'm listening. That's not strange at all, dear. Few of us truly know where we are. The world can seem like a forest without end, and it is all too easy to lose one's way. But we must remember that being lost is the first step in discovering yourself. This is the old botanical lab in Emerald Vale, on Terra 2. By the look on your face, I'm guessing you're not quite following me. Are you not feeling well? I ought to lay your head down if you're running fever. That sounds like fever talk, all right. So why am I tempted to believe you? Where did you say you were from? I could do without the mockery. If you don't want to tell me where you're from, that's fine by me. Oh dear, I see what's happening. You've been taking Adrena time. That stuff will burn right through your upper story, leave you raving and babbling. You ought to try some of my purgative tea. Won't cure what ails you, but it will distract you for a spell. I'm listening. Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. Fresh off the limb, and that includes canid meat. Home is where the heart is. Marauders took that saying a little too literally. Got the strangest craving for Adrena time. Got the strangest craving for Adrena time.
The control room should be off to the right. I hope we're doing the right thing. Forming an area sweep now. We can handle this.
you're fast.
system. Now reduced. Self-diagnostics complete. Navigation systems operational. Combat systems operational. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. All systems fully operational. Return journey successfully completed. Spacer's choice would like to thank you for complying with your duties. Hostile actions towards Spacer's Choice mechanics are contrary to logical directive. Conclusion, all hostile auto-mechanicals must be defective in compliance with Spacer's Choice policy. All defective auto-mechanicals must be permanently dismantled. Please allow me to assist. Affirmative. Mechanicide protocols loaded. Awaiting confirmation. Entering standby mode. Awaiting further instruction.
just leave me alone. You're not real. You're not real. You're not real! You're not real! Get away from me, Phantom! Shoot! Scram! Most people? But I'm the only one left. No. Remember your first rule, Higgins. No arguing with the Phantoms. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your sprats before ingesting. Of course. Sprats are an excellent source for my daily recommended intake of mercury. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aetherwave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries, repaired them, maintained, upgraded, did it all from my old workroom, just over in the next section. Oh, before. Definitely before. Sisty Pig Tycoonery was the apex of my long and storied career. Jimmy'd opened the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Braised. Boiled. Charred. Skewered. Sprats are good eating, friend. Chock full of brain food. Mechanicals lost their bolts. Opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. You mean, why did the Mechanicals go on a murderous rampage? Same reason any of us do, I suppose. The voices told him to do it. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the Mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us. With prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, uh, that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you.
funny thing. I was working on a logic module just before the mayhem started. Security chief found me and confiscated the logic module. The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Forgot what you were gonna say? Me too. Mind the steam, you're liable to get scalded. Go! Processing data.
Any luck finding one of those manuals? No kidding. Really? Well, which one? The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. 
all three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. What's on your mind? Keep your wits about you, friend. Where are we headed? Bring us honor, soldier. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, well, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it, then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by.
switches. That'll be easy enough. the power to Miss McDevitt, what happens to the veil? Something you need? Thank <laughs> you. 
What's eating you? The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Forgot what you were gonna say? Me too. Excuse me, ma'am. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you, do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Miss McDevitt's built something beautiful. Somehow, she's talked the ground into giving life again. It's plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big... Happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever told me those words in that order.
I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. I'm glad the deserters are gonna be all right now they got power, but... What about the town? All those people...
Clearwater's experiencing what we in the profession like to call a quandary. How am I supposed to file a report with a power dead? How am I supposed to file a report with a power dead? Hey. Cannery's dead. This is gonna throw a wrench into my actuarial tables. Just as I was on the mend, the cannery had to go and shut down. I can't possibly cut anyone's hair in the dark. Power's gone. Law knows how long. Looking to get drunk? Go ahead. Suppose I did. Ready to talk about it? What's there to figure out? Stands to reason you work for a company. You ain't Spacer's choice. Could be you're with Auntie Cleo. You're one of those freelancers, then? Running about Halcyon, selling off your loyalties to the highest bidder? Well, good luck trying to figure yourself out. Sounds like you'll need it. Spacer's Choice takes care of its own. Everything's gone all dark, but I ain't passed out yet. Don't make no sense. Numb to the bone, thanks to Zero-G Brew. Zero-G Brew. It's an ale that's good for what ails you. Power's out, but I can't just leave my goods unattended. Don't suppose you'd care to do business? Go right ahead. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Music to my ears. I'll meet you on the ship when you're ready to depart from Emerald Vale, Captain. Somebody's been rambling about some colony ship. I wonder what that's about.
Is Reed hiding in there? Mr. Thompson is aware of your concerns and remains committed to guiding Edgewater into prosperity. Heard you've been taking down Moreau. Are we getting paid or not? Any loss of productivity will be deducted from your pay. Oh, it's you. Reed told me I should be expecting you. He's inside. Exercise patience and contemplate the scriptures. You picked a fine time to visit, stranger. I paid his burial fees, didn't I? Let the dead sleep. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to go rifling through other people's correspondence? Excuse you. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein already belong to Spacer's Choice. And we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Never mind. I don't have to explain myself to you. Abernathy's got some bounce in his heel. Must have heard some good news. You want to know what gets my bile churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? Is that right? I'm dying to hear this. Please, educate me. Liberating? Edgewater is my home. The only home I've ever had. I put down roots here, gave decades of my life to this place. I never asked to be liberated. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you.
All right, easy now. Let's not do anything we'll regret. I'll order my guards to stand down. Take what you came for and then leave us be. You and I have got nothing more to say to each other. I put my whole life in that cannery. You must be very proud. Town's been dark a while now. Could be a mechanical trying to sabotage us. Go on. Don't see the sense in all this fussing over the power. Cannery shutting down just means I'll have more bodies to bury. Yeah? You hear that? That low, pleasant hum of electricity? It whispers across the veil like the winds of change. 
You've done well. I would have paid my last five bits to see the look on Reed's face when the last lamp in town burnt out and the cannery fell to silence. Blunt as a hammer. But you're right. Nothing can undo the past. Time's come to look toward the future. We'll grow, I expect. A lot of workers out there with nowhere else to go. Not as many as you'd think. We're not about to let the whole town join our flock. Just the ones willing to renounce their corporate loyalties and live the way nature intended. I am curious. Why did you help us? You don't know who we are. You don't owe us a thing. The plant's crawling with mechanicals, so it stands to reason you risked your life. You're not quite like anyone else I've met. You haven't had your consciousness programmed by the board. You're welcome among us, if you're ever so inclined. You are welcome here. Keep your wits about you, friend. Hey there. What's on your mind? If you're hungry, Stefan's got supplies. What is it? Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. I have imagined it, but until you came along, I never thought I had the choice. I want to ask you something, and you can say no, but can I come with you? I could tend to your engine, I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I've had my misgivings about Miss McDevitt and the deserters, but... You took pity on them, and sent power to their garden, even though you knew Mr. Thompson would hate you for it. All this time, you've been determined to get your regulator back, get your ship up and running, and cut a path out of this place. And well, I want it. Not much of an Edgewater left to go back to. My whole life's been... small. I realized that when you walked into town. 
I've been seeing the same faces every day, the same sky, the same stars. Then I saw this ship. This gorgeous, stately lady with her eyes turned skyward, and... I made up my mind to come along with you. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Something you need? Nice! Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. 
Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kalkelly. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic Shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. 
When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. <laughs> A change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Yeah, so this is my hidey spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA 120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. because they were hoping their own kid would get the job and get sent back to Edgewater. When folk go away for schooling, they don't get back to where they begun. Not usually. You go straight to your first job, wherever the company's got an opening.
I reckon you could say, no thanks, I don't want a job. But then you don't got a job. Well, they're powerful good tests. They rattled off this whole list of names who'd worked on them, with fancy bits hanging off them. Doctors and Esquires and the Thirds. Even if you don't believe they actually catch what everybody's best at, everybody's got to take them. So at least it's fair-ish. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Oh, there were a whole lot of reading, not nearly enough doing. Like, before they'd issue you a wrench, they wanted an essay on the design of different wrenches. Then there'd be quizzes on company regulations for storage and maintenance of wrenches. As soon as I got permission, I spent all my time in the machine shop. They had all manner of parts, but they didn't want me using them, so I had to sneak them sometimes. I even slept in there, had a hammock tied up in the rafters. Before I left, I installed a little skylight for myself so I could see the stars. Students bunk four to a room. It's supposed to get you used to working as a team. There's no privacy and no quiet. When my roommates tried to talk, I'd get so nervous I'd be drenched in sweat. It was easier for everybody when I stayed off on my own. I doubt any of them remember me now. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. No, oh, but a whole life taking care of Edgewater by his lonesome, working with all kinds of chemicals, it wears on a body. When I left for school, everything got harder for him. I used to help him lift the heavy things and my hands didn't shake for the fine detail work. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape.